Hi guys and welcome to the second video cast of the learning unit. Today we're going to focus on um, the type of learning called classical or operant conditioning. Excuse me. So last time we focused on classical conditioning. Today we're going to focus on operant conditioning. Okay. So operant conditioning, right? Operant conditioning is learning that occurs as the result of a consequence. Okay. So in other words, you do something and you get a reinforcement or a reward and then you repeat the behavior. You do something and you get punished and you stop the behavior, right? So operant conditioning basically says that you learn based on the consequence that follows your action. If it's a good consequence, you repeat it. If it's a bad consequence, you don't repeat it. And this is based off Thorndike's law of effect. And he basically said that be behaviors followed by something good, favorable consequence will be repeated. Behaviors followed by unfavorable consequence, not repeated. Yeah, duh, right? So this is one of those things where we're all like, oh, I could have said that. But he said it first, so he gets the credit. Thorndike's law of effect. Something good, you repeat. Something bad, you stop. Okay, so the guy that took this and kind of applied it to, um, you know, animals and then eventually to people was B.F. Skinner. So this is B.F. Skinner right here, right? another white guy, old white guy with gray hair. And what he did is that he wanted to use Thorndike's idea to create an experiment to see if he could actually teach animals behaviors that they wouldn't normally do by giving them favorable consequences. So he taught, like, um, pigeons to play ping pong and rats, like, turn in a circle and, like, press levers, things that they would never normally do. And he wanted to see if he could teach them to do this by giving them rewards or reinforcers, right? Like little treats, okay? And he called this um, experiment the Skinner box because the animals were placed in a box to do the uh, behavior. And the box is named after him, Skinner box, right? And this is what it looked like, okay? So you had the bar and the goal was to get the rat to press the bar when the light went on that he'd get food. So, you know, he, the, Basically, if he went by the bar, he'd get food. Then he pressed the bar, he'd get food. So a little bit at a time, he would teach the, this animal, this rat, to press this bar down every time this light went on. Okay? And uh, the procedure that he used to do this is a special procedure called shaping. Basically, it's the idea that you uh, give, like, reinforcers or rewards a little bit at the time to guide the behavior closer and closer to the desired goal. Okay? So you start off by, um, you know, you want, you want the rat to press the lever, right? So the rat sniffs the lever and you give him a treat. And then the rat sniffs the lever um, and stays over there for a couple of seconds longer, you give him a treat. The rat maybe uh, puts his hands up by the lever, you give him a treat. The rat then uh, touches the lever, you give him a treat. The rat pushes the lever, you give him a treat, right? So you give, um, these are called successive approximations, that's the term for this, right? So you give um, reinforcers to guide the behavior closer and closer to the goal, okay? We'll press lever for food. <laughs> They're homeless rat. Okay, so taking a closer look at reinforcement. Reinforcement is any consequence that strengthens a behavior. So reinforcement means that you will repeat R and R. Reinforce and repeat. So it strengthens it. You're going to repeat it. You're going to do it again. There's two basic types of reinforcements. The first types are primary reinforcements. These are things that are naturally rewarding from like an evolutionary standpoint. Things that humans since the beginning of time have found rewarding. Food, water, love, sugar, whatever. Okay. Then there's secondary reinforcers. These are reinforcers that only have their power because society says they're important. Money, car, grades, uh, clothing, whatever, okay? So there's two ways that you can use reinforcement, okay? The first way is through positive. Positive reinforcement is a, a reward through giving something good. So when you talk about positive and negative in um, psychology, I don't want you to think about good and bad. I want you to think of addition and subtraction. So in math, positive is addition and negative is subtraction. So positive reinforcement is good by, it's, it's a reward by giving something good. So it strengthens the behavior by giving something that's desired. For example, if you work hard, you get more money, okay? You can also use negative reinforcement, okay? Negative reinforcement is not punishment. Negative reinforcement is not punishment. Negative reinforcement is not punishment, okay? I know all the time in your life, you guys have all done that, you're like, oh, just use negative reinforcement or whatever. No, never again. Don't get it wrong, okay? Negative reinforcement is actually good, even though the word negative is here, because negative reinforcement is a reward through taking away, that's that subtraction, something bad. 
So example, a negative reinforcement is that your parents take away or reduce your grounding because you've been behaving good. So it strengthens the behavior by removing something bad. So the, behave, the, the behavior of being good will be strengthened because the grounding, which is bad, is removed. Positive reinforcement gives something good. Negative reinforcement removes something bad. But both of them strengthen the behavior. Strengthen, 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 strengthen. Okay, negative reinforcement is not punishment. Okay, here's the problem though. You can't continuously reinforce something. So if every single time you do something, I give you a reward, you tend to like get over the reward. Okay, so what we discovered is these things called partial reinforcements. We reinforce based on a schedule, right? We only give you a reinforcement a part of the time, and this is to prevent extinction. Remember, extinction for classical conditioning is when the behavior stops. So it's like, you know, the, the thing, if, if I constantly give you a reward for doing something, eventually you're going to be like, eh, whatever, I don't want that stupid reward, right? But if I only give you a reward every once in a while, you're more likely to do it because you don't know when the reward is coming. So there's four types of uh, um, interval, or there's four types of uh, reinforcement schedules, okay? So the first one is called a ratio, a fixed ratio schedule. Fixed ratio is when you get reinforced after a fixed number of responses. So every 10 pizzas you get paid, or every five fouls, whatever, right? So it's a set number of responses, you get the reward, okay? Then we have variable ratio. Variable ratio is reinforcement after varying numbers, so you never know when. So you don't know how many times you're going to pull that slot machine, and you're going to get, you could play forever, you could pull it 10 times, or 15 times, or 30 times, or one time, and you might get the reinforcement. So fixed ratio and variable ratio both have to do with the number of times you do something, but fixed ratio is that you get the reward after a specific set number, and variable ratio is you get the reward after a random or varying number, okay? Then you have fixed interval. Fixed interval is the same as fixed ratio in that it's a set, right? A fixed amount of time, a fixed amount, but it's an amount of time. So for example, every two weeks you get a paycheck. So it's an amount of time, okay? It's set, it's not random, okay? Then you have variable interval. And variable interval is just like variable ratio in that it varies, but it's like interval in that it's amount of time. So it's a reinforcement after varying amounts of time. So like a pop quiz, it varies. You might get it on Monday, you might get it on Friday, you might get it on Wednesday, you don't know, right? So a fixed interval is a set amount of time, variable interval is a random amount of time. So you have set amount of responses, varied amount of responses, set amount of time, varied amount of time. Okay, so I want you to try to think about what reinforcement schedule this is, right? Take a couple seconds and then the answer will pop up. Okay. I want to focus now on punishment, okay? Punishment is a consequence that decreases a behavior. So reinforcement strengthens, punishment decreases, okay? Now, just like there's two ways for reinforcement, there's two ways for punishment, okay? There's positive punishment. Like I said, positive means addition, not good. So positive punishment is when you decrease the behavior by giving, adding, adding something you do not want. So cops give you a speeding ticket. That's positive punishment because you're getting something you don't want to hopefully stop you from speeding. Then there's negative punishment. Negative punishment is removing something you do want. So for an example, a judge may remove your license for too many tickets. So that's negative punishment because you're removing, like a negative sign at mass, subtracting something you want. So positive punishment is giving you something you don't want. Negative punishment is giving you some, is removing something you do want, okay? Um, and these are both types of punishment. So you see both of them decrease the behavior, right? But they decrease it by giving something you don't want and removing something you do want. Okay, so punishment's not, although we use punishment a lot, it's not that great. First of all, punished behavior is not actually stopped. It's just forgotten momentarily. Punishment teaches fear because, for example, if you're the dad uh, hits the child, that equals fear, like spank, dad uh, e dad plus spank equals fear, dad plus spank equals fear, dad equals fear, and then you learn to fear your parents. Punishment stops the behavior momentarily. So for example, if you're fighting in the hallway, you know, you might get, you might stop the behavior while the deans are there, but it doesn't actually teach you how to get along with anyone, right? And like I said here, this little girl did not just start giving her baby doll a spanking, right? Punishment actually increases aggression by modeling it because the, the baby sees the parents do it to her and then she does it to her baby doll, maybe her kids eventually. Okay, so, all right, that's all for now, AP Psychos, and remember, psychology is flippin' awesome.